Good morning and happy Valentine's Day. Welcome to our morning service from North Tynmouth Community Church. We hope that you will be blessed as you worship with us. I would like to thank everyone who has contributed to this. Helen, who did the songs, Brian, who did the prayers of intercession, Lorraine, who helped me with the sermon, and Andy, who put all, all this together. Thank you to all of you. Shall we have a, <clears throat> a Valentine Day prayer? Dear Lord, we praise you that you made mankind in your own image. And a part of that was the capacity to love, to form loving relationships. We thank you, Lord, that marriage was your plan and so was romantic love. We thank you that uh, because of the love between a husband and a wife, they can bring up their children in a loving family. And we thank you, Lord, for family love between parents and children, grandparents and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, cousins, etc. We thank you for friendship love that we see many times in the Bible, like David and Jonathan and Jesus and his disciples. And we thank you, Lord, for your agape love, your love which is unconditional and it's everlasting, a love that loves us in spite of all the things we do wrong, a love that is constant. You love us because you love us. And thank you, Lord, that you pour your love into our hearts so that we can know deep down that we are loved by you and so that we can share this love with other people. Lord, we pray that we will know this love and share this love more and more. Now, Lord, we pray for this service this morning and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Um, we thank you for the refreshment and the inspiration that comes through your spirit. We're thinking this morning of streams of living water. We remember Jesus' words. And we pray for that, Lord. We pray for a refreshing for our souls this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, everyone. Um, we're about to have our prayers of intercession. And just before we do that, I'd like to just quote some words from John 14, 4. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. And with those words in our hearts and minds at the moment, let's come to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to you with prayers of intercession, we first acknowledge who you are as Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through whom all things are possible. We bring to you our world, which you have created, with all its challenges, injustices and dangers that we all face. We pray for the turmoil and suffering in the world at the moment, caused by COVID-19. We pray for all who have suffered and are still suffering through this illness itself, and those who mourn the loss of a loved one. We pray for all who are working so hard to bring relief and healing. Just as after the dark storm, the light makes a rainbow, so the reality of the vaccine renews hope for the future. We remember the many volunteers have given up time to help others in need. We remember with thankful hearts those who are rolling out the vaccine. For these, we thank you, Lord. For troubled, war-torn areas of the world, we pray for your intervention to bring about peace and reconciliation. We pray for all those who stand up for what is right and pay a heavy price for their actions. For the peacemakers and those who bring hope to those who suffer and are in great need. For these we thank you, Lord. For leaders of the great nations, we pray for wisdom and humility, but strong leadership to bring harmony and fairness into our world. Please uphold those who lead justly, even when that brings condemnation or ridicule. For these, we thank you, Lord. For our Queen and Prime Minister and Government, we ask also for wisdom and humility, particularly for those who acknowledge you as their personal saviour. Give them courage to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's, that they may be like lights shining on a hill. For all these, we thank you, Lord. For the church, challenged so much by COVID-19, we ask your blessing. For those who may feel disconnected through not meeting as they're used to doing. We do praise you for all that has taken place with services online and all the ways your church has continued and prepared for a different future. Being able to greet one another with a holy kiss. For our church, for the church worldwide, we thank you, Lord. Finally, Father, we bring to you our loved ones, family and friends, for our children and grandchildren, so affected by COVID-19, schooling, playtimes, and being close to those they love. We pray for many self-isolating who have not ventured out or mixed with others for a very long time. Thank you for those who have kept employment and ask you to help those who have not. For those who look forward to not just meeting loved ones, but embracing them, we pray for your protection for all of us as we see light at the end of the tunnel. For all our loved ones, we thank you, Lord. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Such love
Jesus, such love, such love, stilling my restlessness, such love, filling my emptiness, such love. Showing me holiness, oh Jesus, such love, such love springs from eternity. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, this morning we're going to do something of a double act. Um, Lorraine's going to do the actual Bible reading, but it's spread out through uh, through the sermon. Um, we hope this morning to really let Scripture speak for itself as much as possible, because we're going to share some wonderful Scriptures with you. Shall we just start with prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for all your love and goodness to us, for the gift of Jesus to be our Saviour and Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit to be our counsellor and our teacher, and for the gift of eternal life. Help us this morning to worship you from the heart and to learn from you as we consider your word together. Amen. So our theme, carrying on the Holy Spirit theme, we're thinking of streams of living water. If you go on holiday to a hot country in the summer months, you can't help noticing how dry and dead the countryside appears the grass and wild plants flower in the spring and by summer they have gone to seed and have withered from the scorching heat and lack of water. However, in botanical gardens and parks, which are regularly watered, all the grass, plants and trees are thriving because the combination of heat and abundant water brings lush growth. In places like Africa, everything looks dead until the rains come. When all the seeds that were dormant suddenly spring into life and the countryside becomes verdant and the flowers bloom once again. The simple fact is that all plants depend on water to survive and flourish. But it is equally true that all animal life depends on water. When the rains come to Africa, the water holes and rivers fill up and there is abundant water for all the various animals to drink and abundant food to eat. Of course, the same is true for human life. We can last for weeks without food, but only days without water. Water is an absolute necessity for all plant, animal and human life. Spiritual life. The Bible says that we are not just physical beings, but also spiritual beings made in the image of God. And that we all need spiritual food and drink that only God can provide in order to flourish and grow. Jesus said, Man does not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Our spiritual life underpins our physical life, including how we think, speak and act, and how we relate to God and other people. The greatest commands are to love God wholeheartedly and love our neighbour as ourselves. Jesus says that these commands sum up the law and the prophets. In other words, they are the core of the Bible's teaching about how to live to please God. The crowd following Jesus asked him, What must we do to do the works that God requires? His answer surprised them. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Faith in Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord is where our eternal life begins. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. But our salvation only starts here, with our justification being declared not guilty by God. It continues throughout our lives with our sanctification, being made like Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Finally, our glorification, when we go to be with Jesus in glory. As John tells us in 1 John 3, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In the Old Ten Testament scriptures, God offered to provide spiritual food and drink for our souls. Do you ever feel tired and dry in your inner spiritual life, in your soul? Well, if so, you are not alone. Listen to Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? In Isaiah 55, God offers us the finest cuisine for our souls. And unlike a Michelin star restaurant, this wonderful food is all for free. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me, that your soul will live. Jeremiah 17 describes the blessings of God when we trust in him. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. In the New Testament, Jesus tells us that he is the bread of life <clears throat> and offers us living water. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. <clears throat> Jesus offers food and drink for the soul. But what if Jesus could give you a source of spiritual nourishment and refreshment from within your own soul? 
Well, this may sound impossible, but don't forget that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and with God, all things are possible. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus explained on a later occasion that this living water would be given through the Holy Spirit, whom he would send to live within each of his disciples once he had returned to his Father. <clears throat> if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this, he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. The promise that Jesus would provide streams of living water through the Holy Spirit was clearly understood by all who knew the scriptures to be a claim to be the Messiah. It certainly produced a lively debate amongst the crowd. On hearing his words, some of the people said, surely this man is the prophet. Others said, he is the Christ. Still others asked, how can the Christ come from Galilee? At this point, we want to join the debate, don't we? And tell them that although Jesus was brought up in Nazareth, he was born in Bethlehem the town prophesied by Micah to the, be the place of Messiah's birth. Unfortunately, the crowd in Jerusalem can't hear us unless we can travel back in time. Instead, like the Samaritan woman, we can go and tell present day people all about Jesus. Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? The result of the Samaritan woman's enthusiastic witness was that the whole town of Sychar went out to see and hear Jesus, and many put their faith in him. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. <clears throat> the river of life in the Old and New Testament. <clears throat> in Ezekiel 47, <clears throat> the prophet Ezekiel described a vision of the river of life flowing from the temple. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. The water became a deeper and deeper river. He continued, then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. In the very last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22, the Apostle John describes the vision given to him by Jesus of the river of life flowing from the throne of God in the New Jerusalem. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear, clear as crystal, crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, 
bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. The promise of living water still applies today for you, for me and for all our loved ones. And Jesus repeats the promise in Revelation 22, 17, almost the last verse of the Bible. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. So shall we draw some conclusions? Last week, our lovely pure white cat, Jasmine, suddenly died of a stroke and we were heartbroken, as were all our family and friends. It made us think of all the poor families that have lost loved ones due, due to COVID-19 and also how quickly everything can change. Jasmine was always fit as a fiddle, right up to the moment at 8pm last Wednesday evening when she had her first stroke and she died at 4am on Thursday morning from a second stroke. Fortunately, the rain woke at 3am so she was able to sit with Jasmine for the last hour of her life. It also reminds us of our own mortality that we will all have to leave this world behind in the not too distant future. And this, this inevitable outcome focuses our mind to see once again the wonder of the gospel of eternal life in Christ. As Jesus told Martha just before he raised her brother Lazarus from the dead, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Eight weeks after this incredible miracle, on the day of Pentecost, Peter told the crowd that had gathered, Repent and be baptised every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And through the precious gift of the Holy Spirit comes the promise of an inner spring of water welling up to eternal life. Shall we say yes please to Jesus' offer? Or no thanks, I don't really trust free gifts. If we say the latter, we should realise that although this gift is free to us, it cost Jesus his life through a painful and shameful death on the cross. A more grateful and much wiser response is to humbly say the prayer of faith to Jesus. Sorry, thank you and please. Can you figure out what the prayer of faith means? We really hope so. Amen. Amen.
finish in prayer. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you that through the Holy Spirit, you provide nourishment and refreshment for our souls so that we can serve you and share the gospel message with joy, enthusiasm and love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shall we say the grace together? The grace yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Right now you can do it. <laughs>